let's see okay can you um give me your pencil uh email for me in the chat box that would be awesome oops <laughs> um hope you've had a good week we are going to do some um lesson five this week and so this week we are going to be talking about um bell curves and um different statistical pictures and basically how we're going to um, present the pictures that we get, how we're going to present the data that we get um, on something visual for that. So um, we first want to talk about standard scores. So when you get data, you know, it's important to understand that when we have that data, we want to, in order to interpret it and compare it to other groups of data, we want to um, kind of standardize it in a way that we can compare them to each other. Um, so this is, we, when we have a standard score, this is also called a z-score. And a z-score is basically taking the data that you have, standardizing it, and then this is the equation that you are going to use for it um, to find it. So you have your value minus your mean divided by your standard deviation. So your value is just going to be the observed value that you got. Um, your mean is going to be the mean of the entire group that you have. Um, so whatever that average is of your data set. And then divided by um, the standard deviation of your data set there. You'll also see this written out like this. Um, so you'll have like x or x minus x bar, so your value minus your mean, your sample mean, divided by your standard deviation, which is s. Um, so that's another way to write um, the equation for a z-score. And like I said, it's just showing you where your observation stands in relationship to other ones. So on a normal curve, um, when you have a z-score, it's going to always have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So our standard deviation is going to be one. So wherever um, your value falls on here, then you can compare it to another, you can find another z-score for a different value. You just plug it in here, use the same mean standard deviation, and then that'll be able to show you, you know, maybe you'll get one that's here and one that's here, so you can see how far away it is from the mean. It can also be on the left side. Um, but that's basically what standardizing your score is, and that's the equation that we use to get it. And then, um, so this does kind of go towards the empirical rule too. And our empirical rule, I think it's great, it's super fun. Basically, the empirical rule is talking about um, the percent of the data that lies below the curve um, between different types, like plus or minus, um, different standard deviations. So our first one we have here is for one standard deviation. So this is plus or minus one standard deviation. So here's the minus, and then this is plus. Um, they're telling us that 68% of the data, this is what the empirical rule shows, lies between plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. So this shaded part that I just shaded in here, that is where 68% of our data is, okay? And um, then so on and so forth, we can just, um, if I clear this and then do the next one, um, if we're talking about 95% of the data, um, that's gonna be plus or minus two standard deviations. And for that one, it's the same idea. So you go over them and then this area now we're talking about is this from um, plus or minus two standard deviations, that's gonna be 95% of our data is in this shaded area that I have here. And then the bounds keeping it in are gonna be the plus or minus two standard deviations that I marked here and here. And then 99.7 is three. Um, so hopefully that is clear there. Um, so that's just the main idea. Um, and then once again, these are, when we were talking about those z-scores over there, these are, this is what, um, what, where you're gonna get your z-score. So if you got a z-score of um, you know one, that means that your value is here on the standardized um, table. That's saying it's one standard deviation above the mean. And technically, if you were to go into this and break this in half, remember we said plus or minus one standard deviation is 68% of the data. So that means that half is gonna be 34% of the data. So you can um, you know, kind of use some algebra in that way. So that's basically what the empirical rule is. It's another way to standardize your data. And then um, keep in mind that when we are doing, um, when we take our data and we put it on a statistical picture, there are certain things we wanna keep in mind in order for it to be recognizable um, to other people. So we do wanna make sure our data is clear, recognizable from the background. You don't want it to blend in in any way. You wanna make sure you label it. Um, so you have your title of you know, basically what all this data is and the purpose of what this data is and then label your axes. So make sure you label the X and the Y axes and um, the different scales for them. Make sure you show if you're going by fives that um, you make sure you show that. Um, so on and so forth. And then just keep extraneous material to the minimum. That just means if you don't have to have something on your graph, don't put it there. Um, if you don't need a key, don't put a key, um, so on and so forth. So the main idea is to keep it as simple as possible with the um, 
the items that you absolutely need. That's the um, main thing you want to do there. So let's try to practice with some review questions here. Um, so let's try this one. So the height of all women um, are normally distributed with a mean of, or the height of women are normally distributed with a mean of 65 inches and a standard deviation of three inches. About 68% of the heights for women fall between what? So try this one out and um, go ahead and type your answer into the chat box there and then we will review it then together. All right, great job. Yeah, our answer is going to be C here. So if we draw this out, um, so remember for our empirical rule, this is telling us that ah, that our data, 68% um, of our data lies between plus or minus one standard deviation. So if we draw out a normal curve here, and then it says our mean is 65 inches, and then, um, like I said, plus or minus one standard deviation out from the mean is what we're going to do to find um, the, our, our lower and our upper bound. So, um, and then what you have to do here, so this is saying plus or minus one standard deviation, not one value, so keep that in mind. Those are sigmas, um, so that's just to zoom in a little. One and sigma, so one standard de deviation. And then um, what you wanna do here, but then for values, it has a standard deviation of three inches, so you wanna go one, two, three, so 65 plus three is 68, and then minus three is gonna be 62. So then that was why our answer is C, because that's showing us that according to our empirical rule, that 68% of our data does lie between plus or minus one standard deviation. And if you actually go through and find that, you are going to get 62 and 68. So good job. Does that make sense to everybody how we uh, came to that conclusion? Who? All right, cool. All right. Of course, of course. All right, let's try this one out. So what do you need to check for first before using the empirical rule to describe a population? So read three answers, A through D, and uh, let me know which one you think it is, and then we will review it together.
Great job. Yes, you guys are absolutely correct. So our answer here is going to be B, um, because if you remember, our empirical rule is based upon that normal curve. Okay. So in order for us to you know use the empirical rule and you know say that you know plus or minus um, one standard deviation is going to be 68% of our data, 95, so on and so forth. We do have to have our data to be normally distributed in order for us to standardize it to this curve in order for it to make sense. Um, A does not make sense because, you know, it doesn't really matter if your population is large or not. Um, we care more about, you know, if our sample is large because we want to make sure it's representative of the population, but A doesn't make sense because you don't really care about the population size per se. Um, I mean, you do, but that's not something that, um, you know, affects the empirical rule. And then C, only what, whether or not um, the 68% uh, population falls within one standard deviation, you can't really do that without using the empirical rule. So <laughs> that's not true. And then obviously not none of these. Yes, what's up? Does this only work if it's a standard bell curve, meaning it's not skewed left or skewed right? Right, that's the same thing. Normally distributed is the same thing as saying that it's a bell curve. Um, they're, they're synonymous there. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so that's the, those are the two um, ways that we describe it. So as long as it's normally distributed, bell curve, either or, um, that means that we're able to use that empirical rule there. So good question. All right. Yeah, vocabulary is very important in statistics, I think, um, to make sure you understand that. There's a lot of things that are interchangeable. There's also a lot of things that, you know, uh, you want to make sure you understand them too um, so that you don't get them mixed up so all right good job so let's try this one out so which of the following describes measurements that have a normal distribution so this one's kind of going off the last one a little bit but um, a little bit more in depth so go ahead and try this one out and we will review it Great job, you guys are so smart, amazing. Okay, so yeah, so remember our normal distribution and you know, you'll see, we're gonna draw this a million times this semester. So our normal distribution, you know, whenever we draw it, we first draw our one line down the middle, which is gonna be our mean always. Um, so C is our answer here, the mean of the measurement is located in the middle of the bell-shaped curve. Um, A says about 68% of the measurements are above average, that's not correct because um, actually if we do actually finally answer this this would actually it would be 50 percent um because since this is our mean this is the center so obviously 50 percent of the data will be here and also you know 50 percent will also be on the other side of it so that's why a isn't true b says the farther away you move from the average the more individuals will have those extreme values for their measurements that's not true um that just doesn't <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense um because it's saying the farther you move from the average it doesn't really mean um that they're gonna have more individuals out there or anything that's kind of variable depending on the data set that you have. So you can't really make that conclusion. Um, so, so yeah, our answer is C. Great job, guys. All right, let's try one more. So I'm supposed to score on the GRE. Oh, I had to take this. Oh, this is giving me flashbacks. Um, was at the 90th percentile, what does that mean? So try these answers and we will go over it together.
Yeah, percentiles can definitely be confusing. I get that. So the definition of a percentile is that um, it's the percent of the data that lies at or below that um, point. Okay, so that's our, um, well, let me actually, ah. Um, so this is what we, that's like our, just our general definition of it. So if we think about it this way, um, so you're in the 90th percentile. So if I were to um, draw this on a normal curve, assuming that it is normally distributed, which it is, when they um, do this, they do put it on a normal distribution. So if you say you're in the 90th percentile here, that means that, um, so not you got 90% of the questions right, that, that's not true because your percentile is comparing you to other people. So that's not, um, this would just be like an individual thing. And then B says 10% of the other students scored lower than you did. That's not true um, because it's the opposite. It, the answer is C because 10% scored higher than you did. Because remember a percentile, wherever your value is, if it is gonna be, um, so the percent of the data that lies at or below that point. So if you're at the 90th percentile, that means that 90% of the data lies at or below the point you had. So then obviously that means that 10% of the data lies here. So 10% were above your score, which is right here. Does that make sense why your answer is C there? Woohoo. All right, good job. All right, cool. So that's all we got for tonight. This lesson's a little quick, um, but obviously you can go, can go check out the um, group reviews on the YouTube channel. And then absolutely, yeah, lots of practice uh, and it kind of comes second nature then at that point. Um, and yeah, so our next group review, if you guys wanna come back next Thursday, we will have our next group review for uh, lesson five. And if you have any other questions for me, um, please let me know now. And then if not, you guys are good to go for tonight then. Thanks, Anne-Marie.